Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Well, somebody requested that we do a full page, full screen menu for them. We've been doing drop down menus and slide in menus that you can add to your site. Uh, somebody requested a full page menu. I wasn't sure whether they wanted a mega menu or just a regular menu. So we've come up with a full page pop up mega menu here with, with using no plugin for this today. And if you decide you want to put it on all pages, just build it into a custom footer or something like that. Then any page you want to pop it up on, you can just put the little button on with the class name that we'll show you later. So let's get started. So here we are on the site. If we look down here, I've got a little button here that says Mega Menu. When I click on it, it's going to pop out this full width, full screen menu here. And I've got sort of all kind of different links. I've got links to projects here, more links down here. You can put whatever you want on it. There's plenty of real estate to put on what you want. I've got a live Google map here. You can scroll in and out and some more little links over here. I've made it totally responsive. So if we look at it on a iPad, let's hit my F12 key. I'm using the Google Chrome here with the inspector tools. If I hit my responsive devices. Here we are on an iPad Air. Let's hit that button again. And here's our menu. Of course, if you click on something, it's going to highlight like a normal menu. I made it scrollable so you can scroll all the way down and get to see everything. And let's take a look on an iPhone. Same deal. We can scroll all the way down. And of course, when you're done scrolling, hit the little X. We come back. And we're doing all of this without a plugin, which is fantastic. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Now yeah, let's roll down. We'll get rid of that button. And here's my menu down here. Let's get rid of this also. Great. So the first thing we want to do is create our mega menu itself. So I'm going to create a new section. I'm going to make mine a regular section. Now you can build any content you want in this, whatever your heart desires, you can pop in here. I think I made my first one a column of six with all kind of links in there. And I'll just show you how I created the first couple of links with horror effects. Obviously you're going to want to do your own thing, but for anybody that wants to copy what I did, I used a simple text module. I put in the text of what we wanted it to say. Obviously put your link in down below where you want to take people with this link. With the background, I left the background as it was. I rolled over the dark background riding up here, got up the hover state. I gave it a black background on hover. Went over to the design tab next. Went down to the text itself, made it white so I could read it. And on hover, I gave it a different color. I gave it a green on hover, I believe. And I went down to the text line height, dragged it up till it was about the size I wanted, something like that. Then I wanted to add a little border on the bottom. If we go down a border, I hit the little bottom border there. Initially, I gave it a white border, clicked on the color and took the opacity down about halfway. Of course, you need to give it a width before it'll turn up. And then on hover, I made it that same green color. And if we roll up, I gave it a little spacing on the left hand side, a bit of padding. I think I just gave it 20 picks, something like that. While we're in the spacing, I want to take away any margin on the bottom. So I put a zero in there that way. Great, we'll save that. I actually made my section a dark color so we could see those links. Blue tab for the section there. Background always under content. I hit the little three dots to get the color palette up. I went one stop up from black. I was 24, 24. And there you can see our link. We'll just save that. And once you've got your first link in there, all you need to do is clone it for however many you want. And obviously change the name, change the link and go on through. I made my 
row full width by going into the row, design, sizing, pull the width up to 100%, and then type 100% in the max width below, give us a full width row there. Make sure you put the percentage on there, not a pixel value. And then I just gave it a little bit of spacing either side, left and right. I think I used 5% on mine. I hit the chain and it did the other side. That's great. So I'll get rid of this. I've already got my row saved. I just wanted to show you how to create those links if you didn't know. And here's my library. There's the one I did earlier. And there it is, just like that. And for my next one, I think I just put four columns in. Again, I use a simple text module. I think I said project one, wasn't it? And obviously you want to link these, put a one on an exclamation mark. You'd want to link these to your project pages or obviously where you want to link yours this is entirely up to you to put any content you want in there and underneath the project i just added an image you want to make it a reasonable size thumbnail would be a little square one i want mine big enough to fill on all sizes so we put that underneath there again for the link put in the link where you want to take people right there for the background again i didn't put anything initially i did exactly the same horror effect click the little arrow there i made it black on hover design wise i popped the text into the middle i made it light in color but i did give it that green color on hover again so text color here exactly the same thing let's get the hover state up make sure you're on the arrow and I believe we gave it that same border on the bottom as we did with the other ones. Hit the bottom border. One. And then make sure we're on the hover state here. And I made it green like that just so it highlights when they hover over it. And again, I just made my row full width. And gave it a bit of spacing either side here. And again, I use five picks. They've all got common spacing. Great. Well, again, I've got that row saved. So we'll get rid of that one. And we'll add the one from the library. And that was that one. Our third one is exactly the same, same sort of links. I just added a little map in the middle. I'll just go ahead and put that one in for you. There we have it. Great. So that was all I included on mine. You can make yours big as small as you want. I've got, you can add more underneath this row, whatever you want. This last row, what I did, I gave it some extra space. So it's almost double on the bottom. So it gives it scrolling room on tablet and mobile. And that's pretty important to do that over in the row settings in design and spacing. I gave it an extra 40 VH on the bottom. 40 VH is viewable height. So whatever screen they're looking at, it's got an extra sort of 40% of that screen size to give it some extra viewable height there. Okay. To make sure that this is going to scroll on devices, we need to go into our section the blue tab here we need to give it a fixed height over in design sizing height i'm going to make mine 100 vh so it's going to be 100 percent of the viewable height of any screen that it's on then i want to go over to the advanced and down to visibility and vertical overflow we want to make sure we put that to scroll little scroll bar will appear there so we can scroll up and down this on mobile and tablet otherwise you're just going to see the top part and not be able to get to the bottom part great now we're going to be using a bit of css and javascript code for this today don't let that put you off 
it's a simple matter of copying and pasting. We're going to get this code from Elegance theme site. Elegance themes are the people behind the Dewey theme itself. So you know it's going to work with our theme seamlessly. Really easy to do. It's pretty much a matter of copy and paste. Um, later on in the video, I'll show you how you can manipulate the CSS a little bit to style it your own way and just move elements about it if you need to for visibility. So let's get back to the build. Now to do this today, we're going to take a little bit of code from Elegant Theme Site over here. And I'll put this link down below the video. And it's all about how you can create a light box with no plugin. If we scroll about halfway down the page, we've got some CSS code here. Copy the CSS code from top to bottom. Make sure you get everything. Control C to copy. We'll go back to our theme options for anybody who doesn't know how to get there. It's in your dashboard down to Divi. We're under the general tab here, right down at the bottom. You'll find your custom CSS box. I've already got mine pasted in there. You just need to paste it in there. I've made a couple of code updates to mine and I'll take you through those if you need to do it to yours also. Once you've got it in there, make sure you save the changes. Now we're going to go back to the Elegant Theme Sites. We're going to roll down a little bit more. We've got some JavaScript. We need to select all of this from the opening script tag there to the closing script tag. Again, Control C to copy. We'll go back to our theme options. This time we're going to go back to the top and go over to integration. And you want to paste it in the head of your blog, which is right here. I've already got mine in here again. If you've got something in there already, just scoot it down and paste your code on top. Or you can put it underneath whatever's there. It should still work absolutely fine. And again, once you've done that, make sure you save your changes. Great. Well, this is where the magic happens. We've now got to turn this into the pop-up. To do that, if we look back over at this text that we copied over here with our CSS, our JS code, if we look up here, just down from the top, it's a great read. I do suggest you read it. It's got some great information on it. I'm just running through it very quickly here. We need to assign the content that we want to pop up a CSS class name of ETLB content one. So I'm going to copy that. We'll go back, back into our little section here, the blue tab. We've got to give it that as a class name over in advance is always where we'll find CSS IDs and classes. So we'll give it ETLB content one. I'm going to save that now. And now we need to create something to pop it up from. I just use a simple button. You can use an image. You can use anything you want to pop this up. Like I say, just have a read of this. It's amazing. All we need to do is give whatever we want to pop it up. The class of ETLB button one. And if you're using more than one, the next one you'd call number two and number two there. So the corresponding ones know which elements they need to pop up. We're only using the one on this page. So let's copy that class name and create a little button. So I'm going to add a little button just under here. And yeah, let's call it full page mega. Call yours what you want, obviously. I'm not going to put a link in there. All I'm going to do is go over to the advanced CSS IDs and classes again. And I'm going to give it that class name, ETLB dash button one. Great. And let's just scoot it into the middle there. Alignment under the design tab. We've got it in the middle and we'll give it a little bit more breathing, breathing room on the bottom. Let's give it a margin bottom. Let's see 15 pH. Great. And we should be good to go. So if we look down here, there's our menu. Just above that, we got our little hero section with our button on it. You'll notice when I save this, that menu is no longer there. And that bit of JavaScript is taking care of that for us. So let's save draft. And we'll exit the Visual Builder. If I roll down, first thing you'll notice is that Mega Menu is not there at all. So let's click on our button and see what happens. Boom. 
our little menus popped out here don't really need to scroll because we're on desktop but i gave it a little bit extra just in case they're looking at a smaller desktop we've got a close button right here and we can check it on tablet and mobile yet again if i hit my f12 here it is on our phone scroll down we'll hit that button here it is on the phone and we can scroll up and down it again close it when we're ready and similar for an ipad Great. Well, our little X here, I've made mine green the same color as my, color as my little links right here. And I'll show you how to do that. Let's just close that up. We go back to our theme options, back to our general tab and the CSS. We roll down a little bit. Here's where the little X is. And initially, I think it's negative one viewable width that they've got it set at, negative one. Let's just have a look over here in their CSS. Yeah, negative one viewable width. And the color that they've got there is, is white. And if we look down on mine's on line 25, it says color of the closing icon. If I change that back to white it'll work on mine but if you're using a white background you're not going to see it on yours just change that back to white there we'll save that and if i just refresh here and we'll pop that up again it works but my x is over there it's a little bit far away from me and like i say i wanted it to be that green color so to change that if you need to and especially if you've got a white background you're not going to see that We'll go back there. We'll change that color. I'll just make it red for argument's sake, or I'll just call, I'll just call it green. And the actual position of it, negative one VW, so it's right on the right hand corner. I think I had mine at plus three just now. So if I change that from a negative one to a plus three, it should bring it in a little bit. So let's save those changes now. And we'll go back and close that up and refresh. As you can see, I've now got a green X there and it's more over to this side. If you're gonna make it five or something like that, it will be right over there. I didn't quite max, match that green, but I'm sure you get the idea. Fantastic. So there you have it. I hope that's answered the question for you of how to build a full screen menu. Um, great little feature being able to pop up things in a light box when they're plugged in. Like I say, you don't have to use a menu for this today. You can pop up anything you want. We demonstrated it with galleries and forms and things like that before. Just uh, let your imagination go and do what you feel like you need to do. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please like, share, comment and subscribe below. It's always great to hear from you. Your comments help me come up with new ideas for videos that may be helpful to you. If you've enjoyed this today, have a look at our playlist. It should pop up just over there. You'll probably find something there that'll work for you. So once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.